Pinewood Board of Education special meeting where we will be reviewing and voting on the 2014-15 tentative school budget. Ms. Saradaki, would you please call the roll? Mrs. Cleary? Here. Dr. Kulikowski? Here. Mr. Lane? Here. Mr. McFall? Here. Mrs. Warner? Here. Oh, I did have the order. Uh, Mrs. Shermer? Here. Mrs. Winkler? Here. Mrs. Bauer? Here. Mr. Whitehouse? Here. Quorum is present. Thank you. Would you please join me in the salute to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In accordance with New Jersey Open Public Meeting Laws, Notice of this meeting has been provided to the Borough Clerk of Fanwood, the Township Clerk of Scotch Plains. The Scotch Plains Times, and I do believe the patch. Um, as this is a special meeting, we did not meet in executive session this evening. Um, again, the purpose here is for us to have any final discussions that are needed for the uh, prior to the submittal or the voting and the submittal of the 2014-15 tentative school budget. Um, prior to that discussion and the motions, I believe we will have a presentation. Yes. Uh, provided to us by our school business administrator and board secretary, Mrs. Deb Saradaki. So, if you give us a moment to clear the path, it'll be all you. This is our 2014 2015 proposed school budget. In 2011, the school election process changed, and we had a board resolution, and the township also passed it, where uh, the election for Board of Ed members was changed to the November general election and this is from when it originally was in April and this change remains in effect until November 2015. Due to this there will not be a public vote on the 2014-15 school budget which is at the 2% cap. Election timelines for Board of Ed candidates July 28th Nomination petitions are due to Union County Board of Elections by 4 p.m. August 11th, there'll be a drawing for ballot positions. November 4th is election day, and the installation of newly elected board members will be in January 2015. Some of the budget guidelines that we adopted for this year to work through the budget are maintaining appropriate class sizes, not allowing our class sizes to get too large. Restore efforts in staff development, curriculum improvement, and program evaluation. Continuing the implementation of recommendations in areas of mandated safety related, energy saving, and long-term maintenance and capital improvement projects using extraordinary aid when possible to meet capital needs and continue to investigate opportunities to reduce energy costs. Continuing to implement our technology plans, including classroom curriculum, and develop priorities of programs to be maintained or changed, seeking ways to provide new and innovative programs. Additional guidelines were giving priority to seek grant funding from federal, state governments, corporations, and foundations. Maintain unrestricted fund balance in accordance with state guidelines at 2%. When excess surplus is realized, deposits will be made into capital and maintenance reserve accounts for future uh, capital and maintenance projects. Funding new expenditure programs from existing programs or fundraising and tax increase will be maximized at 2% but will be not exceed the tax cap. This year, so far, our budget assumptions are a total insurance increase of 18.9%. This is down from the original 20%. Uh, it could change, um, hopefully only going down. Uh, our insurance renewal is not until August 1st. So there is still time for changes based on our experience. But our experience so far has been fairly good. Take it the wrong way. No. 
Additional budget assumptions. Salary increases will reflect an amount equal to the anticipated settlement for the administrators and supervisors since those contracts are up this year and the actual amount budgeted for all other staff. Staffing will be adjusted to reflect anticipated enrollment trends. Principal allotments will be adjusted for the changing enrollment in the schools. Supervisor budgets will be maintained at the 2013-14 levels with increases for staff development as necessary. Utility appropriations will be increased by 6%. Revenue for state aid will remain the same level as 2013-14. These were assumptions going in before we actually got our state aid numbers. Our enrollment trends, as you can see, have gone up over the past five years. This past year, we did have a decrease. If you look at the numbers, you'll see in the elementary level that the numbers are going down, but, and we did have a bubble going through the middle school. It's still there, but it's going, moving into the high school now. The major expenses to operate our schools are salaries, benefits, special education services, instructional support services, transportation of students, utilities and commercial insurance, maintenance and custodial services. And you'll see a picture here of the students in the media center. Initiatives supported by the 2014-15 budget, summer work for aligning assessments to the Common Core professional development for middle school math, and textbook updates for seventh grade U.S. government, Spanish II, and AP physics. Staffing increases required for the 2014-15 budget. An instructional coach, two middle school teachers, high school guidance counselor, high school science teacher, supervisor of technology and data, high school Mandarin teacher, tech support, so total 7.4. The instructional coach is for addressing the um, scores and assisting teachers. Uh, the middle school teachers, guidance counselor, science teacher, and Mandarin teacher are all due to enrollment. The supervisor of technology and data is just that, that uh, due to the state mandates and reports and tech support, we're technically supposed to be up to at least five tech positions so that we can handle the testing that's required. Bank cap. This is, um, we've continued to fund maintenance and capital projects within our budget. If we did not use bank cap, we would be asking for a bond referendum relative to pressure points. For example, maintenance projects that need to be done, staffing needs to support programs and enrollment. Using bank cap from 2011-12 tax rate, the board has identified $1.34 million that can be used in the base budget. The board is recommending using 500,000 of the bank cap for staffing needs and the remainder will be used to fund one-time projects such as new science labs at the high school. Since these are one-time only funds, we are not able to use this money to move programs forward such as supporting a full day kindergarten pilot at this time. Projects to be completed within the budget. We'll be renovating the high school science labs. We have to replace a boiler unit at Brunner Elementary School, which has a repair cost of considerably more than replacement cost. And various bathroom upgrades. We've been working on that and we'll continue working on that. In addition to those projects, we did receive ROD grants to support projects across the district from the state. We are in the third year of HVAC upgrades at the high school to replace old roof units. Uh, these are roof units that our maintenance people actually have been making parts to replace because you can no longer purchase replacement parts. Uh, new security fire alarm systems, heating and cooling upgrades, exterior waterproofing on some of our brick buildings, uh, roofing replacements at two of our schools and window replacements at two of our schools. Here's a summary of our operating revenue. The local tax levy, um, fund balance, other local sources, 
state aid, extraordinary aid, and federal Medicaid. The federal Medicaid is a number provided to us. The state aid also is what the state provides to us. Um, the other numbers, we determine what we feel is appropriate to budget. The total operating budget represents an increase of about 1.5 million or 1.8 percent over 2013-14. This is the portion, this does not include grants um, and debt service. The budget salaries are 48 million, benefits 14 million, Tuition is seven million. Facilities maintenance is three million. Transportation, 2.7 million. Capital expenditures, 2.1 million. And other expenses are 5.9 million for a total operating budget of 83,940,500. Graphically, you'll see that salaries and benefits make up 75% of our budget. Tuition is 9%, facilities maintenance is 4%, transportation is 3%, capital expenditures are 2%, and other expenses are 7%. That 7% is classroom and office supplies, textbooks, media center books and supplies, testing materials, classroom and office furniture, all extracurricular activities, teacher workshops and training, technology, legal audit and other professional services, postage, copy machines and paper, telephone costs, internet access, purchase services such as OT, PT, speech, ABA therapy, and general insurance. Our state aid, you'll see that we received an additional 106,000 this year for park readiness and per pupil growth aid. We don't know if this is money that will continue forward or if it's a one year uh, state aid allotment. So we don't know whether we can project this forward or not. They haven't given us any information. Extraordinary aid, we budget 300,000. This is money that comes from a pool and we, it all depends on how many people across the state apply for this money as to what percentage of our costs they can give us. So the total state aid and other aid is 3.265 million. The local tax levy for the repayment of debt has gone down Last year it was 1.678, and then we also had a fund balance that was used to help pay for repayment of some of the debt. This year it's 1,639,850, and it should continue to drop going forward. So revenue for the operating tax levy. The tax levy plus 2% is $77,839,492. We were um, in our budget. The budget calculated that we have an adjustment for an increase in our health care costs of 362589 which reduced the amount of bank cap we were originally planning on using. We're now planning on using $1.3 million, $1.34 million for a total of $79,539,492. The bank cap that we had available to use from 2011-12 was $2,259,409. We're recommending usage of $1,337,411. 921,998 dollars of bank cap will expire and won't be able to be used going forward. So the total tax levy is made up of the operating fund and debt service, which would be a total of 81 million 179,342 dollars. 
the cost to local taxpayers. In Scotch Plains, the tax impact on the average home is $253.62. The tax impact in Fanwood is $213.21. Both have the same tax impact percentage increase of 3.33%. So what does the budget do for us? If we have support for this budget, we will be able to continue to support our students as they learn concepts and skills in literacy, math, science, social studies, world language, the arts, and technology. They use thinking skills to investigate, ask questions, solve problems, make predictions, and test ideas. Here you see some highlights of the work that our students do in the classroom. You see evergreen students engaged in hands-on science. This is an owl pellet dissection, as well as first grade students doing an experiment at Coles. These are Coles students who are authoring their own school textbooks <coughs> in the area of language arts. Here we have evidence of the support for our world language instruction for grades two through 12. This is a photograph of McGinn students celebrating their diversity through their annual family heritage night. You see our students here engaged in hands-on activities in math. And similarly, this year, we had a parent outreach in math. We've had a series of parent workshops on the everyday math curriculum that have been well attended where parents get to experience how their children are learning math in the classroom. The budget supports technology both in the classroom and for our information systems. And it continues to support our early childhood preschool initiatives, where we provide early childhood programs for children who are three and four years old. This is our Brunner Pre-K. We continue to support the integration of fine arts across the curriculum. Here you see the students at Terrell who are working with Cole siblings. They are paired up for Music in the Schools Month. These are our moon glowers who were participating at the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure. And our instrumental music continues to get great um, enc encores. They, here we have the award-winning Raider Marching Band. This year, they, they garnered many awards. Service learning is developing and continuing as part of our strategic plan initiative. Here you see the park, peer, and leadership support, the PALS program, where eighth graders work with fifth graders and help the fifth graders to feel welcome and safe in their new school environment. The budget supports harassment, intimidation, and bullying training for staff as well as the anti-bullying and character development programs for our students. <coughs> we continue to support our new teachers through a very vibrant induction program. Here you see our new teachers who are in, in year three of their studies presenting their action research projects to peers through a gallery walk this last June. Our students continue to make us proud they are garnering academic honors. Here you see a list of our students who all achieved perfect scores on the SAT at one or more sections. We continue to support our Raider athletic teams, both boys and girls. And you see they also garner many awards. This was our soccer teams that were our county champs. Individually, many of our students also rise to the top. We recognize James Murphy, who was named New Jersey Soccer Player of the Year by Gatorade. And here you see our Terrell students performing in Susical. This year, they initiated a musical at Terrell Middle School. And of course, the capstone is the work done by our rep theater at our high school. This year's performance of how to succeed in business without really trying is truly spectacular. So as we move forward, this is the spring, but we will be continuing to do strategic planning to take us through the next three years of our journey. And we encourage anyone from the public who is interested 
These meetings are open to the public. We will be meeting on April 2nd, April 29th, and May 15th. Finally, so your support for this budget will continue to help us support our students. While our students march to their own drum, we continue to provide excellence for all. So this is the conclusion of our budget presentation. So we'll be open to any questions for discussion that the board may have. Thank you, Ms. Sardaki, Dr. Hayes, for a good, well-rounded presentation that highlights the things that this budget does support, as well as the the cost and impact for that support. Um, board questions or comments? Mrs. Winkler. Um, I had a question about the banked cap that's going to be expiring. Is that not something that we can't find some way to spend it before it expires? Is that? That would raise the tax rate. Oh, okay. Spending it. Okay. I didn't hear your answer. It would raise the tax rate even more if we were to use that bank cap. Doing math on my calculator. Ms. Warner, did you have a question? Thanks. Um, Go. Could you, uh, just um, as for the record, review the process for the budget? Like tonight we're adopting a tentative budget and then, um, you know, what will happen in coming weeks leading up to the final? Tonight we adopt a tentative budget. I have to submit it to the county by Thursday. Uh, in addition to the numbers, I have to submit a, a lot of documentation to support those numbers. The county then reviews it and they get back to us if there's any errors they find that they think need corrections or anything that they need more documentation on. They have to, we have to work together with the county to get final approval by April 24th. Um, it technically should be done before then, but that's their deadline. And that's also the day that we meet uh, and have a public hearing on April 24th. And at that point, uh, if everything goes as planned, the budget would be adopted, and that would be the final point. Thank you. So we're just, uh, this is a tentative, as you said. Yes. And um, we, we have, like, the firm outlines of the budget now, and... We will have two public, two, uh, public presentations of the budget in addition to tonight, one during the day and one in the evening, that people are welcome to come and discuss the budget if they have any concerns. And those dates are uh, available on our website? Uh, we'll have them posted tomorrow. Okay. I think some of them may be outlined in the upcoming meetings. The evening ones uh, mentioned here for April 7th. Right. And the next one is um, in conjunction with the PTA Council meeting, uh, which is a week from Wednesday, I believe. Yes. I just I was really happy that you pointed out at the beginning of your presentation that um, there is a basic change where the public isn't voting on the budget anymore. Uh, so I you know I'm I'm glad that we are offering chances for the public to come before the board and ask questions or express any concerns they have before the final budget mm -hmm. is uh, reviewed and voted on. Any other questions or comments? Mr. McFall. Yeah, does that mean that we're not going to go out and make presentations to each one of the schools? Right. The process has changed from past years where um, between the time, the, the time when we would go out to the schools used to be after we voted on the budget, between the finalization of the budget and then the budget vote that was done by the, by the voters. There's no longer a budget vote. 
So we've expanded the meetings that will be held between now and when the tentative budget has to be adopted so that people have that who have comments on the budget can weigh in. Uh, but there's no point in having continued presentations after the final budget vote because at that point the budget is adopted. Right. If, if something does come up that requires a change once the public has expressed views, it can be changed. It's not the preference on the part of the county office because they have a lot of budgets to handle, but it can be. Now, the other, another thing, in the presentation, you had, I saw the percentage 3.3%. 3 .3%. Right. Exactly what is it and how does that relate to the percentage increase that you know fa families would receive? Uh, the percentage on the av on the average home in both towns is 3.33 percent. It's the same. It's equal this year. Oh, it's, it never has been what before. <laughs> that threw me in itself. I, yes. <laughs> I couldn't explain it always. <laughs> right. It's actually equal. equal. It doesn't result in an equal dollar amount but right. the percentage is, is the same for both towns. Mrs. Warner. So um, in terms of the banked cap, mm -hmm. um, could you explain a little bit more about how you get a banked cap and what it is, you know, why we're using it and all that? Bank cap is developed by not using all raising taxes as much as the state permits in a given year. Ah, so we haven't raised taxes as much as the state permits. So yes. we have, if I could reiterate, we have not raised local taxes um, in recent years up to the max. Even though the state imposed this low cap, we've worked hard. In other words, we've cut back spending, um, not hired people, to make sure that um, even at that low rate, we are not, we did not raise property taxes up to the 2%. Yes. And that's how we, I gather, get that banked cap. Yes, but bank cap does expire in three years. Um, most districts around the state did accumulate it in 2011 and 12, that school year. Okay. And but, that's but when we, we that's when we banked a significant amount of cap mm -hmm. and so any of that bank cap that accumulated which was a little over 2.2 million any that we don't use this year we can never again raise taxes for the balance of that money so the other source of bank cap was if we did not use the um, places in the budget where we were uh, allowed allowances yep. so mm -hmm. So, for example, to offset rising health care costs. Mm -hmm. So it came from two sources, not using the allowable overrides to the 2 percent or not coming up quite to the 2 percent. Mm -hmm. But we, I mean, we did both. Yes, we, right. And, and the effect of both is that we didn't <coughs> raise taxes. Correct, right? correct. Um, because we, we didn't raise taxes to the level that we could. The level right. that we yes. could have because we heard from the community clearly you know, we understand that we, you know, we yes, <coughs> given the mandate not to raise property taxes, we're to limit it to the extent possible. Right. So this year, what we're doing is we're saying that we're going to raise it a bit more um, than we have in the past, because otherwise um, we're losing out on that banked cap. So. Um, and the reason that we have to do that, uh, I, you presented several reasons in there, but what, what I, you know, in finance, what we looked at was the, the needs that have been building up uh, bec um, over the, these past few years, which are, I think, you know, having a negative impact in the classroom by not, um, you know, bringing in more income and being able to hire. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, if you could focus a little <coughs> bit on um, the impact on the classroom from these, um, from 
He's, uh, we're, we're spending 500,000 uh, of the additional mon monies we're going to bring in. Uh, I'm, you know, 500,000 is basically a recurring expense to have the most positive impact possible. So could you elaborate on that? Yeah, it, it's just a little over 500,000. I think it was about 510 or 514,000. Those are costs that will continue to go up because it's salaries and benefits. And we usually anticipate our benefits to go up at least in the 5 to 6 percent range every year. Right. So there are two places that we've applied the, the um, leverage of the bank cap. One is to reinstate some of the staffing positions that have been reduced over time. Um, most notably, we have lost supervisory positions during the years where we either had reduced state aid or we were had a tight budget due to the cap. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been very prudent in terms of thinking through how to put some of those positions back. For example, we lost a supervisory position in special education. Instead of bringing that position back as a supervisory position, we're using um, uh, the approach of, of an instructional coach, uh, which is not as costly, but we're hoping can give support to the teachers in the classroom. Um, we are recommending the reinstatement of a supervisor of technology because that's an area where there are growing needs both to support students in the classroom but also to support the mandates that we must adhere to from the State Department of Ed. We have increased reporting in terms of teacher evaluation, principal evaluation, student evaluation, and all of that needs to be supported through this position in in technology with the supervisor. Well, you, were, you were talking about the perfect example of these online, not online, but um, computer-based tests yes. that all of the kids will have to take mm -hmm. um, and how, you know, that sounds pretty complicated. Um, it's um, in terms, you know, you have to, I mean, can you tell me a little bit about what how complicated that is? Well, we're learning how complicated it is in the pilot, <laughs> but you're setting up testing environments, and in those environments, um, you have to back up the student work as they're entering it. So there's a proctor caching process where you set up mini servers in each classroom to make sure if the power goes out or there's a fire alarm that the, the student work isn't disrupted. That a virtual server, basically, that you're setting up by classroom? Um, it's actually just using um, a, a laptop because okay. it, yeah. it's, right. um, it, it, it's fairly simple text that's, okay. that's being backed up and that's encrypted. Mm -hmm. So, And are the tests actually downloaded onto a child's um, computer in the classroom when they're taking it or is it so web based? That's a similar process where you know, the test is coming in you know, through the web but it's coming in one question at a time and there's also a classroom server for that. So what they're trying to do in the setup is not to disrupt all technology in the district. So the only thing you can do in those periods yeah. is test. So you, you can <coughs> download it to a local server and then the students are pulling from there in yeah. those separate testing environments. Right. So going back to your question about how the bank cap would be applied, the bulk of the bank cap is being applied towards one-time only costs because we've looked at budget projections over the next couple of years mm -hmm. and we did not want to overload the staffing end of the budget because we have to look at the long-term sustainability. So most of the money from the bank cap is being applied towards the high school science renovation project as well as the boiler room at Brunner and various bathroom upgrades. We're applying the money in those areas because it's a very prudent use of the money at this point. It does um, put the district in a position where if we were not using that money internally within the budget through the bank cap, those are the kinds of expenses that other districts go out for bond referendums for because the money then sits outside of the budget initially. Uh, but it also has the effect of increasing taxes over time. So we've absorbed a great deal of the cost for doing that infrastructure support through our budget over the last few years, and at this point we're continuing to do that.
Yep. Yeah, the high school science labs are just fantastic. Um, I hope we're going to see pictures or something so we know where our money's going. But it's, I know that there's a, a lot of interest in those. Mm -hmm. Mr. McFall. Yeah, um, the new testing is going to require that, I guess, each student has their own PC to do the testing? Uh, they will need their access to a PC, right, during the time that they're tested. We understand that we will be given a testing window. So in the past, when the students took the NJ Ask, all fifth graders were tested at the same time. Our understanding is now that the test will be online, we will be given a window of time, and we'll be able to identify then which classrooms take them at particular okay. times. Mm -hmm. uh, but because it is an online platform, it won't require everyone to sit simultaneously. At, you know. That means we'll have even more testing days. The window for <laughs> testing, the amount of time, I, I think one of my colleagues today projected out that it was, what, 48 days or some horrible number like that, don't quote me. But yes, the time frame for testing is, is quite extended um, because the state and the park authors of the test are recognizing that it would not be feasible to test everybody at the same time. So that's elementary and middle school. That doesn't count testing at the high school. Well, the park testing is coming online for the high school. I'm sorry. So when you say park, park testing, P A R C C. Right, but we should think of a partnership. People, you immediately think <laughs> about park middle, middle school. school. Yeah. Now this is P A R C C. Um, the Partnership for Assessment of College and Career Readiness. That's the acronym. How about the partnership test? I don't know. The partnership <laughs> test. Um, so so the, in the past, our students have been taking the New Jersey ASK, the New Jersey Assessment of Skills and Knowledge. That was administered in grades three through eight. And then the high school students took the HESPA, the High School Proficiency Assessment. Those exams sunset this spring, and the middle schools and elementary students will go on to take the partnership tests, but new to us will be the subject-specific tests at the high school level. And they are coming online for English 9, 10, and 11, math, geometry, algebra 9 and 10, one algebra 1, geometry, um, science, I, with the end of course for biology, and stay tuned over time, potentially more to come. But these and are the that's areas. that's in 2015 as well? Yes. Now initially, let me just make the public breathe mm -hmm. a little easier. No student who is currently in the high school, though they will take these exams next year, no student currently enrolled in the high school will be held to this test as a high school graduation requirement. Until when? Uh, a couple of years down the line, we're waiting to hear the specific rollout. It's a, it's a, a phase in mm -hmm. because yeah. the park assessments are new. You mean the partnership assessments? Partnership <laughs> assessments are new and That's a nice name. They will yeah. they will need time to see how well those those assessments are working. Well, you know, that makes a lot of sense. But the high school tests are not within those 48 days, or are they? I believe they are. They are? We just received, we haven't analyzed it, we just received this week the, the, the calendar, <laughs> but we've been doing other things this week relative to the pilot, so we haven't really focused mm -hmm. yet on that time frame yeah. for those tests. And they're a year out, right. so we yeah, have some I mean, time. The point really was to talk about how much um, instruction and testing is dependent on IT, uh, IT information technology and why hiring this person is mm -hmm. critical. It's important. Yes. yes. So, OK. Anyone else? Comments or questions? Just Lane. The, just to be clear, the 1.3% difference 
between the 2% and the tax increase. That's solely attributable to, that's 100% attributable to the use of the bank cap. Is that a correct statement? No. <clears throat> The percentages. People, people are going to be wondering. You mean the it. difference I, between yeah. going to the two percent cap and going to the three point three three? The actual, the actual tax rate increase. Right. The actual tax increase. Yeah. I mean, uh, let me if say, that's I. Both the bank. That's both the health. Wait. They right. don't equate. That's everything. It's awful. It's awful close. If I do the numbers, because. Let me, let me try something here, okay. if I may. We're 3.3%, and I'll use Scotch Plains because I live in Scotch Plains. No, I mean, it's just I had one set of numbers. So it's $250, if I'm correct, right? So each per so 1.3% is about $100 to the Scotch Plains taxpayer. And what we've done is it's hard to say suggesting a $250 tax increase is saving the taxpayer money. But if you look at it that this additional $100 or 1.3% is money, is, is an increase that we've deferred for three years because it's been built up. So I won't be cavalier to say we've saved you $300 over the course of three years, but we have deferred that because this board with this administration has said, if we don't need it now, we're not going to tax you just to build it into our base. What I would then say is, if our overall budget is approximately going up about $3 million or so, for every point or just over a point is worth a million dollars. So if you take 1.3%, you can say that that $100 above the 2% that we're asking the, the taxpayers to pay is buying our science labs that are about a million, just over a million dollars, that every student that passes through our high school will touch in some capacity. Mm -hmm. Everyone will take a science. Everyone will be passing through. So again, one of the things in my time on the board that administration under um, Dr. <clears throat> Hayes' leadership has been very good at is when we do things like this and we ask for a, a high ticket item, we try our best to ensure that that price tag is something that's going to hit as many students, or touch, I should say, as many students as possible. Yes, Brunner needs a $120,000 boiler, and those things are going to happen, and there's going to be uh, bricking reinforcement for waterproofing over at Park as well. But the point is, when you get these big ticket items, that additional $100 that we've deferred for three years is going to touch every student that passes through these high school now or beginning in a year from now and years to come. I think that is a prudent way to spend that money. Additionally, the fact that there is about $900 or so that we're letting of bank cap that we're letting sunset. 900,000. 900,000, I'm sorry. Almost I'm, a million. <laughs> well, again, almost a million. That is almost a point or about $75 that and again, I hate to, to sound cavalier and say we're saving you, but it's $75 that legally we could have put in this budget, um, easily mm -hmm. have found 900,000 plus expenses of need within the district one time or not that, again, in, in, in trying to balance student needs keeping the district high achieving as well as providing our students with multiple opportunities, uh, balancing that against our taxpayers' pocketbook, there is 900 plus thousand or about, and again, I'm rounding, but it's about $75 to the average taxpayer that we're just, we'll never happen again, we, you know, we'll never, we will never be able to raise that uh, tax levy. Um, the other piece about that million dollars for the um, for the science labs that is a one-time expense. In years to come, for anyone that was watching the presentation at home or for our reporter in the room, you saw that our increases are typically anticipated by contractual obligations. Those over the last few years have been around the 2% range with that, that is 
in line with the cap. Our bargaining units, be it our teachers, our, our teamsters, our administrators, all have seen the, the climate that we're living within, and those settlements have been in that range. Uh, nothing else has been close to 2%. We're lucky because utilities are only going up 6%. Benefits are going up, what was it, 16 or 18 percent? My eyes, I couldn't see there, but we were anticipating maybe 20 percent. Every other expense we have, except our, our settled contracts, are going up by more than 2 percent. With a 2 percent cap on a budget, what will happen is that million dollars that we have now will be able to, now that it's baked into the budget, that will allow for potential other one-time expenses or fixes in the next few years to come, but quite frankly, it's going to act as a buffer for items that grow more than 2%. We need that money there in our base budget, or we're going to be slashing programs for whatever our utility bill is. If anything above 2% is expenses, that's going to have to come out of the classroom or someplace else. So this does allow for a buffer within our base over these next few years um, to not reduce other programs. And I, and I don't want it to sound doom and gloom, but that, that's just math, quite frankly. And I think you've done a good job, Mrs. Saradaki, Dr. Hayes, and, and the whole cabinet on looking at those things because, again, I'll repeat what some of my other board members have said is let's not lose sight of the fact that there has been to the tune of what, what just the HVACs alone are well over three million dollars over the last three years that we have not bonded and put on top of and again we know three million dollars is worth two hundred and fifty dollars a year so if we had asked for a bond on top of that and shown that this is physical plant our physical plant that needs help, um, by doing that outside of the budget, we would have had budget increases plus at a minimum 250000 or $3 million worth of bonding, if not more as we've looked at other physical plant things. So it does come this particular year a higher price tag than we've seen over the last few years. But honestly, that's, it's, we, we've held back as long as we could. Um, and I want to, again, publicly for the third time, thank you, <laughs> folks. Because, well, again, it just it worries me because when I saw that number at first, I said, holy cow, $250, that's a lot in this climate. But then when I'm looking at the, the, the three- or four-year picture to say, wait a minute, we've been holding back as best we can, that's... There, there's more to the story than just this one budget. It, I think it does need to be seen over the course of a few budgets and how it's been managed. And, you know, hopefully there'll be more flatness over the next couple of years, at least, while we, while we right size again to, to the figures. But, you know, that's, that's the climate we live in. So I don't know, you're, you're the numbers person that we pay to be the numbers person. Was that about <laughs> right where yes. the 75 and the 100 and the the story I've told, if you will? Yes, it was. OK. Um, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> um, any, Mr. McFall, you have to Yeah, one last question. Are we done with the HVAC units this year? This school? summer. This summer. OK. Because that's always been a noose around our neck, all right, to try to get these taken care of in light of all, every other thing that we had to go over. Because mm -hmm. this is just as important as the Brunner uh, boiler. Yes. And that was a big project that's taken three years, but mm -hmm. again, yeah, we're it's amazing. I'll be finishing the whole back. It's got to be four or five years on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else with questions or comments? Mm. Okay. Um, if I recall, then we need. Do we do each resolution separately? Oh. I was going to put all the resolutions together except for the adoption Bless of the tentative you, thank budget. You. Okay, then let's, right I will then turn it over to Mrs. Saradaki to tell us what we'll, ha what we'll be voting on. Okay. It's all yours. The first resolution is for the adjustment of bank cap, be it resolved that the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education includes in the proposed budget the adjustment for bank cap in accordance with NJAC 6A, 23A, 10.3B, 
The district has fully exhausted all eligible statutory spending authority and must increase the base budget in the amount of $1,337,411 for the pur purposes of essential staffing, boiler replacement, and renovation of high school science laboratories. The district intends to complete said purposes by June 2015. Adjustment for enrollment. It's resolved that the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education includes in the proposed budget the adjustment for enrollment in the amount of zero dollars. Adjustment for health benefits. Resolved that the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education includes in the proposed budget the adjustment for increased costs of health benefits in the amount of three hundred and sixty two thousand four hundred and eighty nine dollars. <coughs> The additional funds are included in the base budget and will be used to pay for the additional increases in health benefits. Resolved that the Scotch, uh, this is for the PERS pension. Resolved that the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education includes in the proposed budget the adjustment for deferral of the PERS pension costs and the additional interest incurred in the amount of zero dollars. Adjustment for responsibility transferred, that's also zero dollars. Capital reserve account withdrawal. And this is for next year. Resolved that the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education requests the approval of a capital reserve withdrawal in the amount of $879,883 for the local share of the following projects. There's the Evergreen Elementary Window Replacement, Coles Elementary Window Replacement, Park, Terrell, Brunner, School One, and Coles Elementary security alarm systems. And this is our portion. The grant dollars are 586588 The total projects for next year, which would be the summer most likely of 2015, would be $1.466,471. Capital Reserve Account Deposit for 2014-15. Resolved that the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education request the approval of an undesignated capital reserve deposit in the amount of zero dollars. This does not mean you can't make a deposit next year. It means that it's not being budgeted. Travel and Related Expense Reimbursement. Whereas the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education recognizes school staff and board members will incur travel expenses related to and within the scope of the current responsibilities and for travel that promotes the delivery of instruction or furthers the efficient operation of the school district. And whereas per NJAC 6A 23B 1.1 requires board members to receive approval of these expenses by a majority of the full voting membership of the board and staff members to receive prior approval of these expenses by the superintendent of schools and a majority of the full voting membership of the board and whereas the board of education may establish for regular district business travel only an annual school year threshold of $150 per staff member where prior board approval shall not be required unless this annual threshold for a staff member is exceeded in a given school year, July 1st through June 30th, and whereas travel and related expenses not in compliance with NJAC 6A 23B 1.1, but deemed by the Board of Education to be necessary and unavoidable as noted on the approved Board of Education out of travel, out of district travel and reimbursement forms, now, therefore, be resolved, the Board of Education approves all travel not in compliance with NJAC 6A 23B 1.1 as being necessary and unavoidable as noted on the approved Board of Education out of district travel and reimbursement forms. Be it further resolved that the Board of Education approves travel and related ex expense reimbursements to a maximum expenditure of $100,000 for all staff and board members. Reading this, I want people to understand this is travel is not, it is usually workshop registrations. We don't, in very limited circumstances, does the board reimburse for actual travel cost. That's the first group. Okay. Can I have a motion? Make a motion. Second. Any questions or comments or clarity needed on any? Yes, Mrs. Warner. The, um, clarification on the last travel um, resolution 
the so we're saying we don't need to approve each and every individual teacher's use of the $150 cap which we just approved for everyone. Right? The law doesn't says we can not do that but we generally do that. Our board approves right. all so even if okay. it's a $30 workshop. Okay but so another time we can discuss that I guess. Um, it just seems to me to be a lot of work if we've already said it's you know it's okay mm -hmm. um, but the, so the purpose of the second um, resolute point which is to allow up to a hundred thousand dollars for you know unusual circumstances above the 150 no the hundred thousand is okay. the limit that we can spend on staff development uh, where okay where for staff up to goes out of district up to 150 and over 150. Yes. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? It's just so when it's over 150, then it comes. I mean, I would. It would think have to come then to the board for here. approval. Right. So you know. Okay. Thank you. And the reason for the hundred thousand is what we do tonight we can't go back and amend during the course of the year so although our number our budget isn't that high it's it's but if a, something comes up that we feel it's of critical that, to send staff to uh, the we are not permitted to change that number so it's a extremely high number just to cover ourselves because whatever number we put in we're locked in so we do an exorbitant well, number. Well, when, when we get to the final adopted budget, right? Not not tonight. Which no, is this number tonight. Oh, why is that? <laughs> I'm just, okay, never mind. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Got it. Think of it almost as part of a reorg type because <laughs> that of that whole changing of the of the election time. Some stuff we've moved to January. Right. Other is still attached to the budget timing. That's why we're doing okay. like that's why it matters this particular one tonight right. versus last January. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Go on, Mrs. Saradaki. Okay, um, be it resolved that the tentative budget be approved for the 2014 school year using the 2014-15 state aid figures and the Secretary of the Board of Education be authorized to submit the following tentative budget to the Executive County Superintendent of Schools for approval in accordance with the statutory deadline. The general fund total expenditures would be $83,940,500. Less anticipated revenues from other sources of four million four hundred one thousand eight dollars. Taxes to be raised seventy nine million five hundred thirty nine thousand four hundred ninety two. Special revenues expenditures in the amount of two million three hundred sixty two thousand nine hundred nineteen dollars. Less anticipated revenues two million three hundred sixty two thousand nine hundred nineteen with zero taxes to be raised. Debt service, $1,639,850. Anticipated revenue, zero. Taxes to be raised, $1,639,000. I'm sorry, $1,639,850. That's total taxes to be raised, $81,179,342. And oh, sorry. <laughs> and to advertise said tentative budget in the Times, a local newspaper, in accordance with the form suggested by the State Department of Education and according to law. And be it further resolved that a public hearing be held at the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education Building, Evergreen Avenue at and Cedar Street, Scotch Plains, New Jersey, on April 24, 2014, at 8 p.m., for the purpose of conducting a public hearing on the budget for 2014-15 school year. So moved. moved. Second. Second. Questions or comments on this adoption of the tentative 14-15 budget? No? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Send it along, Mrs. Saradaki. That's tomorrow, right? Yep. Thank you. By Thursday. <laughs> okay. Um, 
That's all our business for this special meeting with Board of Education Spain, where we will be reviewing and voting on the 2014-15 tentative school budget. Ms. Saradaki, would you please call the roll? Mrs. Cleary? Here. Dr. Kulikowski?